Hana, there's nothing better than getting two business women who are just ready to go out and have this open conversation, no setbacks, even if tech issues try to get in the way, and we're just ready to go ahead and kill this episode. Hana, thank you so much for coming on. I'm so happy to be here. Can you guys tell that we've just had a few interesting minutes <laughs> prior to recording? Hey, listen, we should all be very conquer. pleased that we're here, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But we made it. We're we here. We're doing things. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Hannah, thank you so much for being on, especially, I am I got to tell you guys right now, Homegirl is literally in Spain, Ibiza to be exact. So Hannah, tell me your story. So I work within the realm of healing. And I think the second that you say that, people are like, huh, something happened, didn't it? You don't just like, you aren't just like, oh, I'm going to work in trauma when nothing's happened to you. Right, okay. Right. So I think that gives you an idea that something did happen in the context for this conversation. And, and I always begin my story. I am 19 years old. I'm 31 right now. I think I look like I'm about 14, but I am 31, I promise. And 19 years old, um, I was diagnosed with an array of mental health conditions in the same three weeks in which my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, now, wow. yeah, big three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Solid major. three weeks. Yeah. Major. Now, when I tell this story, what I think is interesting, especially as an adult reflecting back on a 19 year old was that I made a choice. And I made a choice that I wasn't gonna follow my mother's footsteps in which my mother was diagnosed with mental health conditions when she was 19 and she was on antidepressants until she passed away at 56. Mm -hmm. It's my mother's passing and dying that taught me how to live and it taught me to really get very, what's the language that I can use? Very decisive about what I wanna live in my life, whether that's in success, businesses, wealth, but also relationships, joy, you know? When you are a young person, and I was a caretaker for my mother until she passed away when I was 26, um, when you're a young person and you witness mortality firsthand, it changes something within you. So I was really no longer willing to accept lower yeah. levels of anything that I <laughs> than what I desire. And I mean this in money. I mean this in love. I mean this in health. I mean this in joy. I mean this in satisfaction. Um, so it's it's an eleven year period that I'm condensing down. But I suppose in essence, I decided that I would be the person that changed the patterns in my family. So what's passed down oh, from yeah. me and my genetic line is different to what was handed to me. Yeah. Where was your dad in all of this? So I'm hearing both of you are getting these huge diagnoses, you know, um, and I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm trying to imagine, you know, I'm, I'm trying to imagine being like right next to you. And then it's like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing this on my own. It's kind of like the feeling that I'm getting from your story. So, so interesting. Awesome. My dad's a great man. My dad is a fantastic man. He is, um, I always say this to people, you know, at school, everyone's like, what does your dad do? And everyone's like, my dad's a teacher. My dad's a postman. I'm like, my dad's a Norwegian crime fiction translator. Okay. So my dad, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? He collects fig trees. He's got 42 fig trees. Mm -hmm. And my dad's my dad's an English eccentric, okay? My dad's brilliant. I am who I am because of my father. However, my dad is 75. He was born just after the war and he didn't understand mental health. You no. know, no. when I was diagnosed, my father would say to me and he would, you know, he feels, I think, embarrassed now, but he would say, you know, Hannah, we're not changing because you're weird, you know? That's because you have to think 10 years ago, it, it wasn't even like no. it is now. People didn't talk about mental health. So, you know, at all. So in my family, it was like, Hannah, take your little pill, like mum's done, right? And shh, yeah. like that was, that was really how it was. So I think the essence of maybe feeling alone in the journey that you're hearing is that, you know, I was doing my psychology undergrad, I was on medication, I graduated with all of these awards and excellence. And I was like, 
you solved none of the issues that I'm genuinely facing. Like I learned about memory. There is nothing applicable to an actual human being having a human experience. So I think that I made a decision, this is probably like 21 now, where I was like, well, I see the conventional path. You've given me a pill. I have not improved. I still feel sad. My relationships are crap, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, uh, and, you know, I've, I've had CBT and like there was a year waiting list and like not, not much has changed. So there was this real feeling of it's not even about my father or my mother of like, I want a different way and it's a different way that's not being conventionally taught and I'm yeah. going to go out of my way to find that. And that's really when I think my hero's journey as such, if you want to call it or heroine's journey started. Yeah. So getting that diagnosis at 19 years old, mom got that diagnosis, well, got her own diagnosis. How long after did she pass? So she was diagnosed at 19. I was diagnosed at 19. Uh, we thought that she was, so it was four years. We were told that it was curable. And so that's when I started traveling. I left university. I started, you know, training as a nutritionist. I did a whole load of modalities to heal myself when I was 23. So I'd have been living in New Zealand. I got an email from my mom and dad saying, hi, Han, um, the cancer's back. It's terminal. There's nothing we can do. Oh. <laughs> By an email. It's not oh, funny. I laugh now because that shows the emotional level of a lot of adults, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's send Han an email. And then yeah. I decided <laughs> to, and this was a decision, I decided to fly home back to the UK. And that's where I became a, a, a caretaker. My mum stopped living with my dad for about eight months. She moved in with me. Uh, I think dad was in a lot of denial to start with, 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 yeah. you know, we're not, we're not taught about mortality. We're not taught about how to deal with cancer. That This is why I do what I do because we're not equipped as human beings to deal with these kind of situations. No one teaches us in school. And she passed away when I was 26. So it was seven years from first diagnoses and it was three years after second diagnoses. Was there any resentment you had towards, I mean, I get, you know, you, you, one thing you keep on mentioning is dad didn't know, dad didn't know. And I'm thinking about you as this 19 year old, 20, 21, 22, like you don't know either. And so was there any resentment you carried towards your father for, and I'm aware it doesn't sound like he, you know, dumped the load on you. However, the responsibility became yours at a very young age. Here's the thing. It's like you're always going to hear the, 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 the conversation, the narrative from me in my 31 years of age. So how I feel about it as today, Hannah, 31 year old Hannah is very different to how I felt at 19. I've done a lot of work on myself. You know, I've just done a private session with one of my clients and, you know, she's done all of these long retreats with Joe Dispenza. And I'm not saying this to kind of blow my own trumpet but I'm someone that practices what I preach oh, yeah. so you're hearing a very clean story yeah. but not because it was clean emotionally but because I did the work to clean up my side I have a belief system and I have a belief system that my life is my responsibility okay yeah. so let's say there's resentment towards my father what does that affect does that affect my father does that punish him? Does that make it? I don't even believe in 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 punishing someone for what you perceived as bad behavior. I, yeah. I believe that's conditioning that's not helpful to anyone. But I believe that my healing, my feelings, my perceptions of people, my perceptions of my life and my responsibility, and I choose the most empowered narrative. So for me to have a story of my dad's an asshole, which I don't believe at all, yeah. right? There might be an inner child that feels that there might be a therapy session where I have to cry and move that through the body or I have to clear that in my unconscious mind. Right. But that's not helping me. No, that's not helping them. No. And note on resentment. Right. Resentment ties you to other people and resentment keeps you creating more situations in your life that are filled with resentment. So. Mm -hmm. I see that as an unuseful narrative for me to have <laughs> basically. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you were able to explain that because a lot of, a lot of people do stay tied and imprisoned by that narrative, you know, of resentment. And when we're in it, you know, I love that you also brought up, like we do tend to go out and attract and, create this pattern of other relationships where we might carry resentment or even past pain. 
and that impacts the relationship. And, you know, a lot of people get stuck there, you know, so it's refreshing to hear that, although, you know, it didn't, it wasn't so clean, you know, there was a point in which you had to do your own work to heal and to move forward and to own your story, to own your life and, and to hold yourself accountable for your life. And that's not something that happens overnight. Can you take us through that process? What would you say yeah, is I one think of your biggest challenges? Challenges. Okay. Well, what I was going to say before that is that there is a lot of wisdom in knowing what we can change and what we can control in our life and, and what we can't. So for example, can I change the fact that my mum died? No, no, I cannot that's the honest truth. There's a lot of wisdom in that, right? Yeah. So what can I change and can I control? I can change and control my perception of it. I can change and control what I create from it. Okay. So if I decide that it's the best thing that ever happened to me, then it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And yeah. I can control that. Yeah. Right. So right. this is, this is how I really, um, this is how I really do life. And this is what I really teach people. Something that you said, the greatest challenge The greatest challenge, that's a good question. I'm going to answer that with something that is not an answer to the question. And I hope you going to go with me. <laughs> Just well, own the fact that I'm not going to answer the question as you'd expect me to answer the okay, question. It's okay, it's okay. Can I give my perception on challenge? Yes, yeah, hell yes, yes, please. Our life is down to our perception. Okay, so when we consider something as hard or as a struggle or as a challenge, you're already putting it as in a category to notice what is hard and a struggle and a challenge about it. Okay, so I think there's uh, there's there's a saying and I can't remember exactly how it is. It's like a lot of people think that obstacles and challenges are wrong, but what if they're just part of the path of who you're becoming? Right. Love that. I love so that. yeah, you, you know, I faced a lot of challenges. I faced, I continue to face a lot of challenges. I'm building a business. I'm in a relationship. Like I want to have a big, extraordinary life. Like you know, but I eat challenge for breakfast. It's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. the way. That's the way that I choose to frame it. I believe that I'm always bigger than my challenges, and that every challenge that I face, you know, is going to lead to so many gifts that I would never ever take it back. Mm -hmm. I love I. I'm glad you took us there. Um, a lot of what you're saying, you know, um, we're all going to endure some level of pain. We're, pain is inevitable, right? Pain is inev inevitable. And we're all going to endure some level of pain, whether it be, you know, grieving the loss of someone very important to us, you know, whether it be grieving, you know, who we once thought we needed to be and owning who we currently are. There are going to be challenges in life. However, there's also suffering suffering is a thousand percent optional we can choose to be imprisoned by our past we can choose to be imprisoned by you know our perception the way the way you're putting it and i love it you know we we have that choice does it suck that you know maybe things happen in our life or maybe people you know are a certain way Ab absolutely and owning that we do have a choice to either continue this suffering without accepting the reality or enduring the pain. So I like to categorize, um, categorize it as, you know, there's a small moment of this big significant pain or a lifetime of suffering. And so it's all based off of what you decide. And I appreciate one thing that you continuously repeat is, I made that decision. Like it is my choice. I love that you're, I love the way you hold yourself accountable for how you perceive life and what life has, 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 um, what life or the impacts of, of life has had on you. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And it's interesting because a lot of people think responsibility is, is heavy. And so now we're talking about it. That's not my experience of responsibility. Yeah. You know, it's like, if you decide that you're always the problem, that means that you're always the solution. That means that you're unstoppable. 
right? Yeah. That means that everything in your life has got a solution. You know, that means that everything is possible. So for me, responsibility and decision are the lightest things in the world, right? Because yeah. if I can take responsibility for it, I can change or I can have the outcome that I desire and I want, right? And so that's when this gets to be really, really exciting because it's not just about what happened to me. It's about what am I creating for the future me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say gets in the way sometimes when you are, you are in that mind state of, okay, this, this, this challenge or this event or this scenario, you know, is causing a great amount of fear or a great amount of uncertainty for us to be able to kind of switch that perception in those moments, it, it's hard, you know, and sometimes damn near scary. Um, you know, I, I know for me, you know, um, I was, I was, I, I just recorded a podcast episode on this, but I, I have lumps in my breast and that I've had lumps in my breasts forever, um, 23 years. Um, and it, I got a call and it was a different, like, you know, there was different it was different measures and there was a whole big old scare and there was all of this fear wrapped around it. And I remember like, well, what would I say to a patient? How would I, how would I process, how would I have them process through this? And there was a point where I was so stuck in the catastrophizing and, you know, I'm going to die and my husband's sexy. So damn it. Somebody's going to, you know, he's going to get remarried. And I went into all of this distorted thinking, you know, and it was so hard to switch back. And so for those of us, you know, that although we do embrace life, there are certain things that come up that it's hard to make that switch so quickly, you know, and it does take time. And so for you, has there ever been a moment where it was a little harder for you to go ahead and process through whatever life threw at you? And of course, what it was. I mean, loads. I could write a book. <laughs> <laughs> In numerous things. Do you know what I mean? Um, several books, actually, a trilogy. Um, <laughs> tools. You know, it always comes down to this. You know, it's like I always say this to my clients. I'm not special. You know, I'm, I've yeah. just I knew what it was like to not be resourced and to not have tools as life happens to, you, you know, I speak about being 19 and having this diagnosis and this mental yeah. health stuff. And, you know, I don't have any resources. I don't know how to change it. Uh, you know, I've dedicated the last 11 years of my life to tools to transform yeah right so let me give you an example this year go on let's go for some fun ones that have really hurt <laughs> um uh, we've gone into a, a new level of success in business this year I've gone into a new level of success and mm -hmm. I'm speaking to those of you that are listening that maybe had you know a childhood where you were bullied or you were really shy and you were really meek and you were really like a good girl like I didn't say anything in school. I was at the back and I would have like my neatly done hair and my perfectly made up face. And I would not, you know, I would just, you, you didn't even know I was there. <laughs> like I was so painfully shy, right? Mm -hmm. And I've never wanted to be the face of anything ever. It's never been my desire. It's that I had this experience and I know at the bottom of my heart and the bottom of my soul that I'm meant to do this as a career path. This is what I'm meant to do, yeah. but it doesn't mean that my stuff doesn't get in the way. So anyway, this year has meant so much more visibility. Yeah. And it's triggered so <laughs> much. <laughs> it's so exhausting, mm -hmm. right? But this is where I come to I'm so grateful for the tools so let me give you an example of let me think of something icky that happened this year because there's so many things um we we crossed the million line so two and a half years yay Woo. congratulations um, thank you and what's really interesting is that when we create a big positive result unconsciously as children we have programmed in how much good we can hold and when we go over that we start to sabotage okay and we start to unconsciously create things that are not good so we can't yeah. feel the positive feeling okay it's it, it's it's a whole thing but anyway my 
theatrical play out of this was we crossed the million um, euro line because I don't earn in dollars. I'm in India on a business mastermind and then I get blackmailed and then a whole series of, yeah, I, oh, I'm really, I'm not joking, just a I whole believe, series. Of yeah, yeah, of course, because it happens, yeah, you know, it happens. And when you've got stuff around visibility, it ha- <laughs> you know, you're like energetically, you're a target for that. So yeah. um, it entered, let me explain this, because I think this will be helpful to understand. When we experience something that feels like a threat, it creates um, a programming in the unconscious mind right and until we resolve that threat in the unconscious mind that's where you get stuck in spiraling yeah. thoughts like you mentioned right yeah. <laughs> my husband is really sexy i probably that's exactly what i think about my partner i'd be like he's yeah. so sexy yeah. what like what get uglier Damn get fat <laughs> <laughs> um so what's really important is to know how to disengage the unconscious mind. And it took me a while to realize it because sometimes when you're really in it, yeah. <laughs> you just need to be in it for a second. And it's yes. Fine. yes. There's no shame in that. Where you just at, like, I'm, feel the pain. I'm exactly like it's happening. Yeah. You know, I'm not perfect. I don't have to be perfect. Yeah. It's, you know, life's not about perfection, but eventually we, we're done with that. Yeah. <laughs> we want to. We want to use the tool, right? Yes. There's incredible tools that you can use to reprogram the unconscious mind, to speak to the unconscious mind, to unhook the unconscious mind. And what just happens is like, it's incredible. You know, th- yeah. the anxiety goes, the 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 racing thoughts goes, the nervous system response goes. And it's just, I'm eternally grateful for the teachers, the tools, the modalities that I have and use, because not only do I teach them to my clients, like, when I say I'm well practiced, I'm always using them. My life is as good as it is because of them, not because I'm special. Yeah. No, I think you are special. And we are all special. Right. Right. And <laughs> it's so it is, it is so important that we practice what we preach. It's a thousand mm-hmm. percent important we practice what we preach. And, you know, unfortunately, when we reach certain, you know, certain goals and you know, um, our dreams are coming true. There, there are some backlashes, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate that you had to endure that. And what I think is amazing is it's through that, that you are able to go ahead and achieve even greater goals and you are able to go ahead and dream even bigger. Um, I feel like for me, you know, anytime I've, you know, made a goal or just thought of something that I wanted to do and it happened, it was just like, oh shit. Oh yeah, wait a minute. I am a badass. I could do that and I could do this and I could do this, you know? And our mind does play tricks on us. And it it, it I love that you said, you know, for that moment being able to be in the thick of it and and feel it because it is a painful experience and being able to honor that pain, it it is part of that healing process. So I I love that you said that. And then knowing, okay, all right, we did that for a minute you know, and now I, I can, I have these tools, you know, that Hannah will teach you. I have these <laughs> tools that will, that will take me even further. So I don't stay imprisoned by this. Completely. And there's a thing when something bad happens as human beings, what we sometimes do is we judge it and we make it wrong, right? We, yeah. we don't accept it. And there's a lot to be said for being like, this is how I feel. Yeah. This is what's happening. Yeah. It's not bad. I'm not going to resist it. Mm-hmm. I feel sad. Positive that came out of being blackmailed though. Um, and having a hate page. Can you imagine? That's I'm like, nice. what what? Um was I probably shouldn't say this about that, but it just makes me laugh. But the positive of it was that I was so scared to ruffle feathers. I was so oh, scared gosh, yes. to be disliked. And now I'm like, yo, like I don't care. Yeah. And that's and not a not a I don't care. Like, no, I genuinely no, no, no. feel emotionally neutral. I'm not going to go out there and be an asshole to yeah. provoke. No, right? for what? For what? But I'm good, you know? Yeah. And different levels of success means more people are going to see you and some people are going to like you and some people aren't. If we yes. need everyone to like us, those are chains, right? Yeah. So those that's always something we have to work through. Listen to what she, she just said, ladies. Can you repeat that? If you need everyone to like you, then those are chains. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Why would you say they're changed? I a thousand percent agree with you. 
when you need people to like you, they control you and you don't control you. And this looks like I need this person to like me. And in my mind, I think this person is only going to like me if I'm X, Y, and Z. That means that I'm only going to show these qualities of myself and I'm going to throw away all the rest of the qualities because God forbid I say yeah. that and I offend someone. Okay, let me give you an example. My partner's ex-military, right? 13 years in the military. We swear a lot in my household. We are very direct, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? We are like, just, you know, it we don't, it is. it is what it is. We beat yeah. around, we don't beat around the bush, you know? Yeah. And so the way that I communicate, I'm also Spanish, you know? Girl, in Spain. Listen, I'm not Spanish, <laughs> I'm Latin, but I'm going to tell you right now. Yes. <laughs> The audience already knows there's <laughs> F-bombs, there's holy shit, there's all of that in here. So yes, 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 yes. My sister from another business. Okay. Yes. No, you do, right? Yeah. So, and I, but some people don't like that, right? So if you're so bothered by the people, you're going to show up and you're not going to show up as yourself, <laughs> Right, you're going to show up all weird because yeah. <laughs> you're trying to say the right thing, and people are going like, "She's weird." <laughs> you're like, I promise, I'm really nice. I'm just very like, I'm just so controlled. I'm like yeah. putting myself into this contortionist box, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of freedom to be like, well, some people are going to like me, some people are not going to like me, but at least I got to be me, you know? Yes. There's so freedom. There's so much freedom in that. I remember um, when I started my training. Um, and I'm in this meeting, I I was working at the hospital at the time and I'm in a meeting and I'm in a meeting with a whole bunch of doctors and clinicians and we're all in there and we're talking about our patients. And I remember like, okay, just keep it cool, Veronica, keep it cool. You're professional now and you're wearing this badge and you have to be professional. And I remember I'm in this meeting and we're going over, you know, we're collaborating treatment. We're going over what our treatment plan is for, you know, our patients. And I'm like, you know, well, listen, we fucked up that one and here's how we fucked it up. And, and I was passionate. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the word passion, mm-hmm, of really passionate about the care that my patients were receiving. And I was upset at how things needed to be done because of the politics. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to hold back. My patient really needs this care and I'm going to be their advocate because they can't sit in this meeting, right? They're not allowed to sit in this meeting. And I was like, fuck it. You know, we fucked up that one. This is how we fucked it up. These are the things that I recommend. And this is how I want my patient to be treated. And I remember like saying it, you know, those moments where it's just like, you know, fuck it. And then you have that moment of where like, you're trying to come back from it because like, holy shit, you said fuck it at the wrong time. And like, this is not the time you use the fuck it card. Like this is totally wrong time. And it was, I felt like I should hold back and I need to go back and revert back to this, you know, kind of like how you were saying this contortion, contortionist. And like, it was like, no, I'm, I'm going to own this. And I remember after that meeting, I'm looking at my boss and I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> shit. Um, and her and I's relationship changed after that moment. She knew how passionate I was about my patients. She knew, she knew me. You know, and I didn't revert back to this quiet training individual. It was, I'm going to own the fact that I'm carrying this badge or I'm in this position for a reason. What is my mission? And I'm going to execute that mission, even if people don't agree with me. And it was crazy because from that one meeting, my relationships, not only with the director changed, but also with the medical staff, also with the psychiatrists. Then they were in, they came up to me and it was just, it was just this change, this shift in dynamics. And it ended up being where, you know, the director would come into my office and we would have dance parties to, you know, to shake it off before we went into an intense session. But it was just like, I had a different relationship with them because I showed up as myself. And so I love the fact that you said, you know, yeah, we are bound by chains when we try to change or compromise who we are to meet other people's needs. I love that you said that. Yeah, no, and I love the story that you've said because what you can hear underneath is like, let's talk about relationships for a second. It's like, how can you have true intimacy if there's not authenticity? Bingo. It doesn't happen. It doesn't Doesn't happen. happen. It doesn't happen. One thing I'll say over and over is, you know, in any relationship, friendships, especially primarily marriages, 
you have to be independent before you could be interdependent. Yeah. A thousand percent, a thousand percent. You can't show up an exceptional version of yourself for your partner. If you're not showing yourself that exceptional version of you first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hannah, I, I, I feel like we've met each other, like in some other life. We probably have. I'm like, can I go hang out in the room that you're in? I know I keep talking about it. I'm like, look at those sofas, <laughs> oh, look office. at this table. So I'm like, where is this? Can I come? Is you it can totally hang out. You could totally can hang, hang out. out. Is it appropriate for me to just come to your office? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Anna, thank you so much for joining me and all of the tech issues. My lights ended up turning off. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And we made this happen. We made this. Yes, we made this happen. What Imperfectly is, perfectly. Exactly. Exactly. What is one, what is one, um, what is one tool? What is one word? What is, what is the, the feedback that you want to leave our listeners with? more than you know right now in this moment it's possible oh can you trust that oh my god can you say that again like literally that just pierced my heart in the bestest way ever <laughs> it did i love it more than you know right now is possible can you trust that yeah oh my yeah. god I'd hug you, but your ass is in Spain. <laughs> uh, not for longer. I've been very clear about coming to your office. Girl, come over. Come over. I'm in Cali. We'll do lunch. We'll party. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Look at this. We didn't have, obviously, we didn't have a script. We both said, you know what? <laughs> We're going to just go. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to go with this. And this is what I love. I love this is what I love about the podcast community is being able to meet professionals such as yourself, these badass women that are changing the world, being able to have this honest, real conversation without anybody holding each other back. No competition. We're just able to go out and share our wisdom, share our experiences, our fears, and, and just be real. Thank you. Thank you. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Absolutely. And um, yeah. I'm excited. We... Mm. I was going to ask for those that want to work with you, because I know there's a bunch of women that are like, oh my gosh, sign me up for whatever Hana has. Like, how can we connect with you? So I think the best way to get a feeling of what I do is I've got a free course, which is yeah. called Integrative Healing. It's four days. And this is for people that are kind of want to feel, firstly, my teaching style, it's intense. I'm Spanish. My <laughs> clients tell me I teach like I'm on a telenovela. Do you know go. what? Do you yeah. know what it's like? That's like yeah. your spirit, your spiritual telenovela. We're doing so, real work here, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to get put that in a little warning. So, but the reason that I say this is that you can get a feeling of the modalities that I teach. I think we teach over 15 different types of modalities for different um, forms of healing, but it all leads to this extraordinary life, right? Yeah. Um, however, for those of you who are decisive and intuitive, and you're just like, I know I want to work with you. Just drop me a message on Instagram. I think that's the easiest thing. I certify people. We've got places for people to do the self-healing work. We've got yes. such an array of courses. I'm not going to bore everyone by going through them because we try and keep things very bespoke to people's needs. Mm -hmm. Message me, book in a call with my team or try Integrative Healing, the free course. I'll send a link after and I'm sure yes. it'll be on the show Right. We will have this. We will have all of this on the show notes. Hannah, thanks again. We definitely have to connect again because this was amazing. And I am so thankful and so blessed to have met you. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs>